Justin Bieber, there was Paul Anka. And this year, the legendary singer, songwriter, and former teen idol celebrates his 55th year in show business. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Not an easy business, folks, to navigate. To commemorate the occasion, he has written his long awaited autobiography called My Way, and he's recorded a new album of classic duets. All right, so we jump into this. As I said at the top, Justin Bieber, you know, he's the teen idol. We look at, you know, where he is. You were. The original Teen Idol, in many people's viewpoint, uh, uh, view, you wrote songs like Diana, Put Your Head on My Shoulder, all these great songs. Were they autobiographical? Yes. How so? Well, I'm a teenager in Canada, where Justin's from, uh, living a teenage life. Different time, of course. We're not in a media-driven society like today. The business is small. Uh, I'm out there chasing girls, trying to get on base. No luck. <laughs> so I see this girl called Diana, who was in church, but four years older than I was. So back then, however old you were or tall you were, that was the key dynamic of getting a date. So she wanted nothing to do with me, so I wrote this song for her. I'm so young, you're so old, this my darling. If I'd written it today, it would be, I'm so old and you're so young. <laughs> so I write the song, uh, she thinks it's cute, she doesn't give me the time of day. I uh, borrow some money and I leave on my uh, vacation from school, I go to New York and uh, start calling around. My buddies were down there from Canada, so they put a mattress in a bathtub and I lived in the bathtub. <laughs> And I went and got an appointment at ABC Paramount Records. Uh -huh. And uh, within a week, I had a contract. Got real lucky. They flew my parents down, and that was the end of that. Then I was on American Bandstand. Now, can you imagine? Oh, wow. I'm Remember a that? kid on American yeah. Bandstand looking at it, not believing what's happened. And I almost quit show business because when I got there, they'd had me practicing for a whole week to lip sync to Diana. And that means, as some of you know, they play the record and you go, yeah. say nothing, but you're lipping to a record. So I get on there and we get to the bridge, which is, uh, oh, my darling, oh, my lover, tell me that there is no other. I love you with all my heart. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> The record sticks. At uh oh. Now I'm on national <laughs> television. I said, that's it, I'm out of here. <laughs> wow. So you, you talk about uh, puppy love as well. Yeah. A lot of this stuff, by the way, in his book, too, that, that you recount these stories. This was about Annette Funicello, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Great lady. Yeah. She recently uh, passed away. Yeah. yeah. And she's within us. She was a special person. Um, Annette and I were dating, you know, I was with Frankie Avalon and Fabian and those guys, and Annette was America's sweetheart, still is, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they just didn't want us to get too serious, and Walt Disney and all his people saw us getting too close, so they wanted to pull us back, and they kept saying, it's a puppy love, it's a puppy love, and I'm going, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we couldn't get too close because their mother was there, et cetera, et cetera. So I go home, like everything else that I observed as a kid, and I write, and they called it Puppy Love, and I recorded it, and that was for Annette, and that's how that song got started, and then Donny Osmond took it to another level. Yeah. Later, yeah. There's so many people that, you know, with a career like you're spanning, 55 years, more than five decades, that you get to know whether it's a net, whether it's even Donny Osmond, because he's been around for so many. You knew Elvis well. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine you saw all sides of that man. Yes. Were they easy to take, some of them? Yeah, I mean, you have to understand, you know, the, the book, what, what it really is about. Th these are my experiences with people that, you know, People usually put all of these artists up on, uh, as idols and what have you. We're human beings. And Elvis was a human being like everybody else. And we all have our little dark sides and we all make choices that may be abnormal. But Elvis was a great guy. He was a sweet guy. I got to know him a lot better when he came to Vegas because we were on the same label in the beginning. And he loved his music. He loved his audiences. Um, he, he just couldn't deal with getting older, you know. Mm -hmm. And you try and sit with them and say, hey, you know, we've had a great run. We're all going to get old and just take it gracefully and what have you. And his dark sides weren't really that severe. I mean, you know, he'd like to sleep in all day and put aluminum foil up on the window so he wouldn't see the sun. Sure. Uh, he, he loved to play with guns. 
uh, I don't know, for a couple of months he was not too fond of a guy named Robert Goulet, who was a fellow Canadian, great singer, but Elvis, yeah. whatever, and he'd come on television, Elvis would take his pistol and shoot the television set. <laughs> now, not an everyday occurrence in all our lives, but you know, no, he couldn't go out because people would mob him. So he had his little tricks on things that he did. We'd meet in Vail, and I'd be out skiing in the day, and he liked to go out at night. So they put the lights out for him, and he'd get on a snowmobile and go out at night. But you know, that's all okay. He was a great artist. Yeah. He loved what he did. People loved him, and deservedly so. So Elvis was cool with me. I, I, I liked Elvis and all of those guys in there. You know, the book is not judgmental. It's just about experiences that I had about great artists that were on the other side, human beings, and they dealt with their lives the way that they chose to. And I think we should all be able to do that, right? And you knew a whole cast of characters, Dean Martin. And uh, how was his uh, public persona different than who he really was in real life? Well, I, I knew Dean, of course, but less than uh, Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis. Uh, Dean was not the drunk lush that he portrayed. You know, he just loved apple juice and he, they'd water the drinks down, but he knew how to play that, right? He'd like to go to bed early, sit and watch westerns and eat his pasta and get up and golf. You know, it's Frank and Sammy that were the real players and loved to have fun. These guys were, you know, a man's man. Mm -hmm. It was all the time something was going on. We'd all meet in the steam room, which was the thing to do back then, you know. <laughs> And you'd walk in, and I'm a kid, really, but they embraced me because I'm working that circuit, and I'd walk in, and these are my idols, and you know you know what it's like, somebody you idolize, and you walk into a steam room, and they're standing in front of you nude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, that was where I really uh, learned a lot from those guys, uh, <laughs> professionally, and you know their whole philosophy toward entertaining. Because back then, you have to realize, it's not like today where you have the technology where you can do anything with a voice. Back then, there was none of that stuff. I mean, if you didn't know how to sing and, and put the time in and have a work ethic, you were dead in the water. You know, it just it didn't exist back then the way it is today. Why, so you talk 55 years in the business. Why this book now? Why are the stories coming out at this point? Did you want to do it earlier? Was there something about this moment that Well, I was special? waiting for a few people to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but seriously, I was, uh, <laughs> I contemplated for a year, years to do it, but I felt it was just not the right time. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, I was always very, very active and you needed to stay active. And I wanted to wait till I got to an age where I had enough stuff because you know, I figured a few more years from now I may not have the memory to remember half the stuff in there. So I, I waited until now, but I was on the, the Howard Stern Show mm -hmm. and uh, I was promoting my Rock Swings album and I was telling these stories and all of his demographic and his listeners would call in and say, why don't you do a book? We want a book, we want a book. And uh, the editor at St. Martin's heard about it and called and said, would you be interested? And I said, well, let me think about it. You know. And so I took a couple of years to do it and uh, finally, it was the right time to do it. And that's why the CD and the book. Well, listen, we, we're not done with you yet because I have so many more questions. We're gonna slip away to a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about, we can share with us the story of how he wrote the famous song, My Way, for Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll never know. 